full-time RV living is fun. Yes, it is. But what happens if you fail at it? <laughs> not an option. <laughs> you could fail at it. You could. We have not really ever talked about what our backup plan is in case a lot of things go wrong and we get into like a financial crunch uh, because we've already sold our house. We yeah. don't have a place to go back to. No. So we have to have a plan in case things go wrong. Yeah. Anyone who is out there thinking about going full-time RVing should have a plan. Absolutely. Before you even oh, yeah. think about getting out there on the road. Yeah. Um, so for us, we're going to share those with you. Um, we have several of them, and some of them you can work actually in conjunction with each other. Yeah. And Some go hand in hand. And financially recover even faster to get back onto the road. Yeah. So for us, the first thing that we would do is we would start staying exclusively in Thousand Trails mm -hmm. Parks. And because we have the elite membership now, we can stay at any of Thousand Trails Parks for free. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't take us very long to build enough money back up to get back out on the road if we got into no. a pinch. It would just suck having to bounce from Thousand Trail to Thousand Trail because you can only stay three weeks at yeah. each one. So we'd have to do the little hop around for a while till we accumulated whatever we needed. Yeah, and if you're staying at those parks for three weeks at a time, you're saving money on gas yeah. and other expenses as well. Mm -hmm. um, that adds up pretty quick. Too. So yeah, we could get back on the road pretty quick if yeah. we stayed at Thousand Trails. Probably within a couple of months, we could get back to a place where we could just do it again. Yeah. So that would be the fastest way for us mm -hmm. and the most preferential way. But if that was not an option, if we were in a place where there's not a lot of Thousand Trails and we didn't even have the money to, to get to a place where there yeah, was lots of Thousand Trails. Yeah, we're stuck in the trails. middle of the country and there's yeah. no Thousand Trails. Um, the next option would be just slow down. Or if you're not a Thousand Trails member, uh, yeah. an option for you would be to just slow down. And what I mean by that is we move once every week or once every two Maybe weeks two sometimes. Weeks. Mm -hmm. So we would just slow down. And do some monthly stays because you can stay monthly for a, a lot, lot less yeah. than you can stay a weekly or a nightly rate. Yeah. So we would do that. Um, that and would be we, painful too. It would be painful. <laughs> and you we like moving. Yeah, and you could probably stay at you know campgrounds that weren't the best yeah. for a cheaper price. Yeah. So if you do that in conjunction with a, a low monthly rate, uh, yeah. you could probably bounce back pretty quick. Pretty quick, a couple months. Um, for us, being retired military, we can stay on military installation campgrounds and they have better rates than privately owned campgrounds. Yes. So if we do the private, if we do the military in conjunction with staying monthly, for us anyway, yes. we could, we could, we save, could save money yeah. really quickly and probably bounce back pretty fast. And you can shop at the commissary, which is cheaper than regular grocery stores, so all in all, you, you are going to have a good savings from that. Absolutely. The only downfall to that that stuff is, is you might not be geographically where you want to be. Well, no, because most military <laughs> places aren't anywhere that you want to be geographically. No, most of them are not in great locations. I mean, there's some that... Yeah. A pretty kick-ass. But you'd have to happen to be close to one of those places <laughs> when you ran into your financial issues. And we would not. We <laughs> Our luck, we'd be Fort Irwin, California Fort, or something. Yeah. <laughs> Out of Park. Where your closest town's like an hour and a half away. <laughs> yeah, but it is an option. And yeah. so that's that's part of our progression of, of planning in case mm -hmm. of emergency. Um, I think the last resort would be a work camping situation, yes. which we would, wouldn't rule out. No, it's not a it's not a rule out, but it is yeah. like fourth or fifth on the list. Yeah. Of. <laughs> but for people who don't have the military option, don't have the yeah, thousand trails choose. option. Yes. Uh, work camping is definitely a viable it is option. A very ideal option. Because you can stay at the place for free while you're camping mm -hmm. and 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 just working just a little bit. Yeah, it's it's not ex like strenuous work and yeah. it's not back breaking. And so you could probably bounce back pretty quick by not having the campground fees or yeah. electric power, water, all mm -hmm. that stuff is all taken care of yeah. and you're good to go. Um, there are a few things that you need to have to make any of these plans even feasible. Yeah. And that is the biggest one is you have to have a reliable source of income. Mm -hmm. You have to have a source coming in to replenish the funds that you lost <laughs> so that you can get back out of the road. Yes. Now, there's several ways you can do that. For us, it's a military pension. Yes. And VA. And VA, yeah. Um, so that's our predictable, reliable source of income. Mm -hmm. um, you could have a remote job where you work for a company, but you work remotely. You could own your own business. Yep. 
You could be, uh, you know, very crafty and, and, and build contractor. stuff. Contractor. There's lots of stuff that you can do. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is you just have to have some kind of money coming in. Yeah. Because even if you're staying at Thousand Trails for free, yeah, you're staying there for free, but no money's coming in. So you're not building anything back up to be able to get back on the road. Exactly. Um, and um, I wanted to also mention that, at least for us, in our opinion, YouTube is not a reliable source of income. Absolutely not. <laughs> even if you're a big channel, and even if you're making a substantial amount of money on YouTube, it's still not predictable and reliable. It's, yes. Because it's very unpredictable, unstable. Anything can go wrong on YouTube. Yeah. Um, they change their terms and conditions all the time. If you mm -hmm. violate one of those, they could just turn your channel off. Yeah. They could delete your stuff. If there's a glitch in the system, it gets hacked or whatever. Um, it could just go away instantly. Yeah. It, YouTube money is like um, commission money. Exactly. Not only is it not reliable in that it might not always be there, it's not predictable because the amount you earn every month is not always going to be the same. No, it can vary. Yeah. You can make several hundred dollars in one month because you're putting out really great videos that everybody likes. The next month, you didn't do so it's well. Sad. Yeah. You don't make time nearly of as the much. The season sometimes yeah. makes a difference whether, you know, winter, I think more people are watching more because they're not out and about as yeah. much. So. so I would say YouTube to supplement a little bit, and that's only if you're pretty substantial channel yeah because uh, even your smaller channels you're not going to make enough to even make a dent and it would take you forever to build up enough yeah to be able to get back out onto the road mm -hmm. and um what we're going to do is so look for it coming up soon when we hit that 10,000 subscriber mark we're going to do a video and we're going to talk about how much we make on youtube okay. uh, because we wanted to, to to get to an area where it was very measurable so I think 10,000 is a good place good where you can, you can say, okay, as a YouTuber with 10,000 subscribers, this is kind of what your income would generally look like. Yeah. Just to give everybody an idea. And I'll just give you an idea right now. It's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> no. So um, some of the other things that you have to take into consideration and that you need is, um, for us anyway, we felt like we needed some kind of a savings. Yes. So we made sure we hit the road with some money in mm -hmm. the bank in case there is an issue. We can live off of that for several months. Mm -hmm. We can continue this lifestyle and live off of that for several months and try to you know, figure everything out before we go to these default plans. Yeah. And so we may not ever even have to go to those plans because we can live off of our savings. They don't want to touch that. No, we don't want to mess with that. <laughs> Um, the next thing is you want to have minimal debt before you hit the road. Yeah. You don't want to be uh, having to pay a bunch of money while you're trying to recoup enough money to get back out on the road. Yeah. Because then you're just treading water. You're not really yeah. going anywhere. You're just breaking even. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely want to lower the bills before you take off. And we know that's not possible for everybody. Um, no, I would say situation's different. most probably have some kind of a, of a bill in a truck or an RV or yeah. some kind of a credit card debt or whatever. Yeah. We do. We have a truck and an yeah, RV payment, know. but we don't have any other debt at no. all. And the other things we have to worry about is like our day-to-day -day groceries internet. and campground yeah. fees and yeah, internet and phones. Phone, and cell phones. Your standard bills. Yeah. Not necessarily debts. Yeah. So. If you don't have any of that <laughs> in place, you definitely need to have some kind of a support system like friends or family that will let you stay on their land or park your RV while you stay with Store someone it, else. Yeah. Um, but the main thing is, no matter what it is, you just have to have a plan. Yeah. Some kind of a plan. Don't just go out there and wing it, man. You gotta have a couple plans. Yeah. You can't just have a plan. Yeah. You gotta have multiple plans. So we have a plan. And we have a backup plan. And, and a backup, backup to, to the backup, backup plan. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we even have a backup, backup to the backup. To the, back, to the backup. backup. <laughs> yes. So we feel more comfortable having those layers uh, of fallback. Yes. Because we, if one doesn't work, we can go to another or go to another. And yeah. even if we go to the first one, like Thousand Trails, and and we're recouping, but we get tired of that, then we can, we can slowly go back out yeah. to regular campgrounds. 
at a monthly rate. So you, like I said before, you can use any of these in conjunction yes. with each other to get back on your feet. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. But um, there are a lot of people out there who are just, just watching YouTube and YouTube does glamorize it. And it looks awesome out there and it looks shiny and new and fun. Yeah. Um, but there is risk. So we yeah. just wanted to, to share that with you and let you know what our plan is. If you are a full-timer, uh, let us know what your backup plan is. Or if you are planning on going full-time, um, let us know what you have in, in mind for your backup plan. Um, maybe you didn't have a backup plan, but maybe now you do. Yeah. So <laughs> hopefully uh, you learned something from this. Hopefully you got something out of the video. And uh, like we do at the end of all of our videos, we're going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with us in helping vets, everything you need to know is down here in the description mm -hmm. of the video. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.